If you are someone who has been on the yo-yo diet path for far too long, you eat less and gain more, or at least try to eat less, Dr. Natasha Turner has a carbohydrate rehab program to improve your metabolism and help you put the right carbs into your body. Natasha is a naturopath and a best-selling author. Her newest book is The Carb Sensitivity Program. Discover what carbs will curb your cravings, control your appetite, and banish belly fat. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Natasha Turner back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to see you again. Nice to see you again. And the boys don't have to worry about banishing belly fat <laughs> no, because they they're don't. rowing across the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. But the rest of us, well, mm -hmm. not you, well, but some sometimes. of us. When you age, do you get more belly fat naturally? You absolutely do. You become more carb sensitive, too. Really? Mm -hmm. Is that what causes belly fat, carb sensitivity? It, uh, basically, yes. I think it's the number one reason why most of us have more belly fat. Mm. Yeah. What is carb sensitivity? What causes it? Well, I, I came up with the concept of carb sensitivity based on the work that I was doing in my clinic. In the last four years, I've been putting patients through the programs based on my first two books, the, the Hormone Diet, the Supercharged Hormone mm -hmm. Diet. And what I noticed is that these programs were based on a two-step process. The first part of the process is all about helping you to reduce inflammation, to detoxify your body, and to identify food allergies. And then you move into the process of eating for hormonal balance, where I teach people how to eat the right foods at the right times and in the right combinations to help stabilize their blood sugar and, and insulin. Mm. And so what I noticed is that a certain proportion of patients, when they move from step one to step two, they stopped losing weight. And I thought, well, or they stopped g or getting more cravings or getting an increased appetite or they started to get, gain water or get, get bloating. Right. And so I thought, well, w what's happening? This is a very healthy, balanced diet. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not an excess of calories. It's not an excess of protein, carbs, or fat. And so I thought, well, what's happening here? So I started to analyze the carbohydrates that I was recommending as part of that phase of the diet. And so I analyzed the starchy carbs, the starchy vegetables, the beans, the grains, potatoes, and even in the healthy, low glycemic carbs, I discovered two things. Number one, that these foods really vary in the amount of carbohydrates that impact your blood sugar. So for instance, if I chose squash as my starchy carb for the day, I'd be consuming about four grams of net carbs or those carbs that would raise my blood sugar. If you chose sweet potato, you'd be consuming about 20 grams of carbs. And so I realized, wow, I mean, obviously if I don't want to gain weight, I don't want to eat the carbs that are going to sp spike my blood sugar. So maybe I'm going to choose squash. The other thing that Rather I realized... Than a sweet potato. I know. And here I thought that sweet potato with all the vitamin C was the great food. I, I know. And I just have an example, actually, of a woman I'm coaching from Boston. And I said, what carbs are you eating? She said, I'm eating lentils, I'm eating squash, and I'm eating sweet potatoes. She said, I've stopped losing weight. I said, take the sweet potatoes out. She said, at the end of the week, she's lost two more pounds. But so it is, it's very, it's a big impact on your mm. metabolism. But the other thing that I noticed, which I think is the really, the huge thing, is that everybody's ability to metabolize carbohydrates is unique. Okay, that makes sense. So um, just like food allergies and sensitivities, I realized people need to figure out their carb sensitivities. And what I mean by that is that when I eat a carb, it will to cause a completely different physiological reaction in my body than it might be yours, in the sense that carbs are the only major food group that trigger the release of insulin. And insulin, I mean all food groups eventually trigger insulin, but right. carbs have the biggest impact on insulin. And the big thing is, is that insulin is the only hormone that is telling your body to store energy as fat. So you never want to have too much insulin. So when you get an insulin spike because you ate five sweet potatoes that's right. or whatever. Right. That's, so that's what's happening is that the more carb sensitive you are, the more insulin your body will release in response to the type of carbohydrates that you're eating, even the healthy carbs. Okay. So then I realized I have to create a process to help people identify what carbs they can eat so they don't get a spike in their blood sugar and a spike in their insulin, and then what carbs should they avoid that, that cause mm -hmm. these types of reactions. And you actually, I figured out you don't need blood tests to figure this out. You can actually figure it out just based on how your body's responding to the foods when you eat them.
And so I, I created a, a process of phasing in the carbs week by week, and I created a, a checklist at the end of every week. You complete the carb sensitivity checklist. And if you pass through with no symptoms of carb sensitivity, then you're ready to go on to the next group of carbs. I see, but the symptoms of carb sensitivity, if you're not at the doctor's office, are. <laughs> yes, they are um, increased cravings, increased appetite, fatigue after you've eaten the carb, you know, the carb mm -hmm. coma, um, bloating or water retention, um, in, um, difficulty losing weight or an increase in your weight from one day to the next. I had, for example, one patient, she introduced squash and beets and carrots. Overnight when she woke up in the morning, she was totally water, retaining a ton of water and her weight was up three pounds. So how does she know if it's the squash, the beets, or the quinoa? Well, <laughs> well that's just it. I help eating. you figure that out. But the, 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 the thing is, is that that person's very carb sensitive. Okay, so, so those are the short short symptoms, the mm -hmm. here and now symptoms. I, a blood sugar imbalance. Yeah. Why why should we worry about it? Well, <laughs> here's the really scary thing. So, mm. I realized, you know, when I really started to look into the whole concept of the hormone diet, your hormones are controlling every single aspect of your ability to lose weight. I mm. thought that that was a massive realization. And then this book is the evolution of those two books, and I realized the number one most important thing you can do, the one, number one most important hormone you can balance is your blood sugar, which is therefore balances your insulin levels. Because I've done the research to look at, and I realized this one hormonal imbalance, which I would say probably 80% of us have, is linked to every single disease associated with aging. Chapter three talks about really? all the long-term implications of having high insulin levels, and I, it actually was shocking. And long-term implications would be well, uh, diabetes. Diabetes and pre-diabetes. For instance, I mean, by the year 2020, mm -hmm. one in three Canadians will have pre-diabetes or diabetes. One in three. So that's not, that doesn't develop overnight. The symptoms of carb sensitivity are directly a, a warning sign for those conditions. Hypoglycemia, sure. blood sugar imbalances, cravings, fatigue after eating, not losing weight, having more belly fat. Um, so definitely diabetes, pre-diabetes, that's an epidemic. Um, heart disease, stroke, fatty liver. Alzheimer's, fatty liver, osteoporosis, muscle tissue loss, colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, infertility, um, obesity in childhood is directly linked to the, the your mother's um, blood sugar and insulin level during pregnancy. So now, why do we think that childhood obesity is, is accelerating? It's because of insulin imbalance during pregnancy. How long does it take for someone to get their blood sugar levels down? You go to the doctor, they say, gee, you're pre-diabetic or your blood sugar is high. And you think, I've been eating quinoa, yeah. I, I'm an organic eater, I do everything right, I might have the odd martini, and my <laughs> blood sugar's up. How could that happen? You know, um, it's shocking. Yeah. It, 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 there's a lot of reasons why this happens. Number one, I think, is because you're, you're, you're repeatedly eating the wrong type of carbs for you. Absolutely, that's the okay. number one thing you've got to do. You have to figure out your carb sensitivity. And if you look at the plethora of, of low-carb or no-carb diets out there, there's, I mean, there's a reason why more people lose and then gain back more weight on a no-carb or low-carb diet than any other type of diet. It's because when you take out the carbs, it lowers your blood sugar, it lowers insulin. So mm. therefore, less insulin, you're going to lose the weight. Mm. But no one can stick to it. So that's I get why that. uh, who you, doesn't like the pasta? That's right. And as soon as you put those carbs back in, you gain the weight back. So mm -hmm. I realize, well, I've got to figure out a process of helping people. Why take out all the carbs if you're okay with some? Mm -hmm. With some. So and then, trying to figure that out takes how long? Well, it takes about every week. I get you introducing the carbs back in immediately with after right after the first week. So the first week, your carbohydrates you're going to be consuming are fruits, low glycemic fruits and green vegetables. They have carbs. They have carbs. Most people don't realize Who that. Knew? Yeah. And Anything so, that doesn't have carbs? <laughs> <laughs> very few things, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so right away, at the, at the end of the first week, I have you start phasing them in. Most other programs would have you phase in carbs at week 8 to 10. They would have you avoid them all completely and then phase them back in at that point, mm -hmm. which you're going you're gonna to rebound weight gain. Because... I want you to eat the carbs that are perfect for your metabolism, you can start to phase them in after one week. So at the end of the first week, if you've lost weight, if you feel energized, you don't have water retention, don't have bloating, you, f you feel good, your, your appetite's under control, you can start to begin to phase in the carbs. So the people who tell us they don't eat much, but they still gain weight, 
could be telling us the truth. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. It is not about your calories. It's about the carbs, the sources of mm. your calories. Interesting. The proteins, the carbs, the fats. And you know what you just asked me when I was flying out of Calgary yesterday? Right. Um, the woman in the bookstore, she said, she said to me, um, how can it, what do you do for people that don't eat carbs? How can I still be overweight and I'm not eating carbs? And I said, well, are you eating fruits and vegetables? You're eating carbs. See, we always so, think that couldn't be carbs, it I, couldn't be bad, but it has to be and something, and it's it's protein, too, prote little yes. protein and a little carb in a piece of broccoli or an orange. Well, you've got to figure out, and I said and to her... sugars and... Exactly. There's mm. two things. We all know that bad carbs are bad. you got to avoid them. But like, I, tell, I tell you to eat them once a week because I think you should. Okay. Um, what like are bad carbs? Like white bread or white pasta or white rice or have my dessert and a glass of wine. Mm. You should be doing that once a week. It's very important for your metabolism. But I said to this woman, um, are you sure you're, you're not eating any carbs? And so I, I said, you want to figure out the best carbs for you. And if you find out on that first week when you're eating green vegetables and fruits only that you still have not lost weight, I said, I've actually created a metabolic repair diet that I laid out in the book to help you repair your metabolism so that you can put the carbs back in. And that's the thing, is people mm. take out the carbs and they don't do anything to repair their body and to repair their blood sugar and insulin level while they're avoiding the carbs. Okay, so you have to find the balance, and the You've balance is to. personal, and the fish oils work in there somehow, I know that. They do. They do. They're part of the metabolic repair program. Mm -hmm. They're actually part of, I mean, there's supplements, there's there's exercise, and there's avoiding the, your carb sensitivities. So if you figure out you can't eat legumes, then you would not eat legumes, but you'd still be able to eat beets and carrots and squash and all the healthy carbs and still continue to lose weight and have a stable blood sugar. But the really unique aspect of it is that there's a solution. There's a solution mm. to carb sensitivity. Mm. There's mm. a solution to avoid you getting back on the yo-yo dieting cycle, which we know perpetuates right. heart disease, cancer risks, and carb sensitivity. Sure. So um, the workout. And carb addiction. Carb mm. addiction. That too. I have a whole chapter in there called "This Is Your Brain on Carbs," mm -hmm. because. But the fact that a chickpea could cause us to gain weight. It's frustrating. <laughs> it's very frustrating. I can't eat the chickpeas. It's one of my carbs. Is it? So yeah. you know your carbs. I know You my have carbs. the list. So yeah. no more hummus for you. <laughs> no more hummus maybe for me. Maybe once a month. That's well, maybe See, once a month. See who knew? Because we yeah. thought I thought we were being perfect. I know. You know black beans, quinoa, know. chickpeas, feta yeah. cheese, all of that. And you say not necessarily, not necessarily for you. Not necessarily for you. And that's that's the really powerful thing is that you want to eat the carbs that are best for you. If you find out you can't eat the carbs, I'm. I'm I've actually helped you. I'm going to create a program to get mm. you back on track with the carbs so right. that you don't perpetuate your risk of diabetes exactly. and yo-yo weight gain. I so there's a solution. Mm -hmm. And what about drinking? Well, <laughs> there is carbs in the wine, yes. but I encourage you to cheat once a week. So if you want to have your, your cheat meal and have okay. your wine, you But there can might be more carbs that. in a sweet potato than a glass of wine, you think? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Thank oh, you so much for having how me. How nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you Thank too. Thank you. Uh, the Carb Sensitivity Program. Dr. Natasha Turner, discover which carbs will curb your cravings, control your appetite, and banish belly fat forever. Forever. Promise? <laughs> I hope so. Unless yeah. you want to roll across the Atlantic. <laughs> okay.